My goal for creating something simple and classic like a line technique is to approach it with precision. This starts with prep, combing all hair into natural fall, keeping the hair nice and wet for control, clean sectioning and consistent combing are all mechanics that keep me organized and precise. The challenge in each line technique is the details of each individual guest. From inconsistent density at nape and hairline to neck, shoulders, and ears, being able to maneuver around these obstacles is key in achieving the desired precise outcome. Using horizontal sections, my cutting line will control my length from back to front and my elevation is controlling my technique. You could see that I'm using my comb as a ruler while I set a foundation for my shape with zero elevation to control my technique and my cutting line is horizontal, controlling my length from back to front. Together, my guest and I decided on this length based on density, wave pattern, and where this would sit in relation to her jawline. Notice each section is being taken clean but I'm clipping the hair away with less tension. This is allowing for my guest scalp to sit natural to the shape that I'm cutting. Too much tension on a section in your hands or the section being clipped away with too much tension will alter the end result of your shape. Finding the correct amount of tension for each guest and being consistent with that tension is extremely important. As I work through this line technique, I'm using the wide teeth of the comb, putting little to no tension on each section to allow for some feedback from her natural wave pattern. My comb is only there to help guide me horizontally and also to control the hair and keep it as close to the skin as possible when I cut. head position, body position, and the ability of my guest to sit still are also necessary for me as an artist to achieve the best possible end result for me and my guest. These are things that I like to talk about in the consultation so that we are both set up for success during the haircutting process. These positions might change during the haircutting process, so it's important that I keep an open dialogue of communication, reminding my guest what position they should be in while continuing to thank them for helping me to create the best shape possible to them. Understand that my main goal is to cut this shape about 80% perfect wet and then blow dry, smooth and refine the remaining 20% to precision. This will give me the most versatile and most durable longevity out of each and every haircut. After my wet shape is finished, I can be confident their hair will hold up when they style their hair natural and wavy. Once refined, smooth and dry, I will also rest assured this shape is precise enough for them to wear it smooth as well. As a young hairstylist, I would often try and be too perfect with my wet shape. I'd then blow dry and wish I had back some of what I had cut off wet. As I've gained experience, I've noticed by working with less tension on a perimeter shape like this, I have to trust my process and not micromanage wet hair section by section. I continue to remind myself that my guests are not paying for a perfect wet haircut. They're paying for the best looking and dry result. This does not mean we should rush through the wet portion, but just be mindful that this is a rough draft. The refining process is the final polish that will complete the look. As I move up the head shape, you'll notice the hair is not segmented into four quadrants. I've learned from trial and error that the best approach to a seamless and clean line is to approach it as fluid as possible. I found the segmenting from front to back only creates more opportunity for me to shift my cutting line or my elevation unintentionally. Similar to drawing one straight line with the help of a ruler, 
working a continuous line from back to front hairline, cuts down on the human error, and you'll see in the end result that there is no separation from front to back. My line is infinite and uninterrupted in the cutting process, and this allows for that seamless transition and predictable end result. Ears are what I consider to be another obstacle to creating a solid perimeter shape, but they don't need to be complicated. We just need to be sure that the hair above the ear is long enough that it can travel over or around the ear to reach our desired length. Simply tap above the ear or leave that section entirely uncut until refinement that will easily solve this issue. Using little to no tension in the front is allowing for me to make sure I'm keeping length in an area that is less dense than other parts of the head shape. You'll also notice I have combed the hairline to the temple. This helps me to make sure I'm not unintentionally over-directing the front and cutting off the corner that I purposely created. By using the approach I used today on a one length, you will be able to minimize the things that are out of your control and maximize the focus on the details and discipline required to duplicate a precision line technique on any guest with any hair type. So you guys can see the beautiful end result from Ryan's haircut. It's all smoothed out. Now we're going to go in, add a little bit of life to it uh, using the Paul Mitchell Neuro Titanium Flat Iron. Just give it a little twist and bend, and you can see all the movement that pops into that one length haircut. So we'll just finish it off with a little uh, Paul Mitchell Neuro Protect, and you guys got your end result. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.